this is Liam Vu, and welcome to Eat, Play, Stay in the Islands of the Bahamas. Get ready to go on a culinary and cultural tour of your next vacation destination. The country is comprised of 700 islands spread across more than 250,000 square kilometers. With a total population of 380,000, each island has a rich history and heritage that Bahamians are ready to share. But much of that was threatened with Hurricane Dorian. So I had to check in with the Minister of Tourism to see how Bahamians were doing in the aftermath. So uh, Hurricane Dorian, as the world learned, was an extremely impactful storm on the Bahamas. Um, specifically, it hit two of our islands, uh, Abaco and Grand Bahama. And it was the largest and most powerful storm to ever come ashore in the Bahamas. But they have begun the rebuilding uh, process uh, as we speak. Much of the Bahamas was unimpacted by the storm. And the best way you can help us is to book a vacation to the Bahamas and experience all of our other islands. Now, for people who have not been to the islands of the Bahamas, how would you describe uh, Bahamian culture? Food plays an important part of our culture. Everything centers around a meal. We have wonderful festivals, but generally a very warm, very kind, very engaging, very generous people. We encourage our foreign visitors to, to go off and explore. There's lots to see, there's lots to experience, there's lots of places to go. So don't just limit yourself to one hotel on one island. Be adventurous. I decided to take up his advice, so I traveled to Old Nassau to check out Heritage Village by Greycliff. It features a hotel that was a historical colonial home that dates back to 1726. Hi, I'm Liam. Hey, nice Liam, how you doing? I'm Glenn. Welcome to Greycliff, first five-star restaurant in the Bahamas. The building was actually built in the 1700s by a pirate by the name of Henry Gray Smith. Down in our cell is actually a prison. And if you go down there, you actually can see the door. The original door is still there. I'm scared. It, it weighs about 300 pounds. I'm scared. We also feature the largest wine cellar in the Caribbean, third largest in the world, with the oldest registered bottle of wine, which is a 1727 half-bottle German white wine. So when you walk into Greycliff, you're walking into history. So we want you to have that same feel as you would have had back in the day. And just down the street, you can also visit a museum, a fish fry, and a variety of shops, including Greycliff Chocolatier. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, welcome to Greycliff Chocolate Factory. Thank you so much. This is the only chocolate factory on the island. You take something that people know, a lot of people know what chocolate tastes like, but you infuse a lot of local flavors. So yeah, we have the different flavors of chocolate, like the curry coconut and the top seller, which is the sea salt and caramel. And then you also have a spicy one as well. Yeah, the goat pepper. Most of you call it ghost pepper, mm. but over here we call it goat pepper. It has a little kick to it, but it also has pineapples inside of it. Yeah. So it isn't really as hot, but it's white chocolate. So here's your pepper. Oh my gosh. Okay. When you swallow it, you'll probably taste the kick to the spice flavor. Oh yeah. Right now, I'm still tasting a lot of the sweet. Just like a filling in it. And yeah, there it is. Just around the corner, you'll also find the cigar company where you can watch master rollers doing what they do best. Well, we are here in the excellent uh, Galeras that we call where we make cigars. All the cigars that we made here are hand rolled completely 100%. They made 120, 150 cigars per day. And yes, you can also learn how to roll one yourself, or at least try to. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh no. It's like I'm ruining it. Okay. So then you get one of them. Oh, wow. That was two. Okay. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared to do it. Okay. Just like pull it, twist it. Oh. So roll it. Just roll it. Okay. Okay. It's so so. Oh, so so. Okay. I'll take so so. So so is better than that. Let's just pretend that this is the one I rolled. We'll pretend that's the case. God has, has blessed us with a beautiful geography. When you combine this with our incredibly friendly and kind and generous people, it really makes for a wonderful destination. It just allows you to disconnect and to really reconnect with one of the most beautiful places on the earth.
more than 700 islands and caves, there's no shortage of bright blue waters and beautiful beaches. The only thing missing? An ice cold cocktail. Luckily, just a short walk from downtown Nassau is John Watling's Distillery, the home of handcrafted small batch rums. So I heard the pina colada here is uh, absolutely amazing. It's unlike any pina colada I would have had. You find it nowhere in the world. Our pina colada is handmade from scratch. Oh, amazing. Wow. Look, I got chills right now. Okay, after that moment, I was feeling a bit peckish. Luckily, the islands of the Bahamas is also known for its food. You know, our origins in the Bahamas really came from a West African background, mixed with Caribbean flavors to make a combination of just great food. But it's one specific ingredient that seems to capture the hearts of locals. We like Kung Fu on the island because what it does, it strengthens the back. Oh. And, and who doesn't want a good back, right? right? It helps us produce a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the first time I've heard that. It is one of the few items of the world that actually can be prepared in every possible way. You got conch fritters, you got grilled conch, you also have deep fried conch, or as the locals call it, cracked conch. Today though, we are all about conch salad and I'm gonna be helping out Chef Prescott at Frankie Gone Bananas. What I'm gonna make is a junkanoo salad. It consists of uh, onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, orange, lime, and fruits. We wanna get the, the butter knife under the meat and slide it left to right to free them up off of the shell. So oh, it whoa! Right so that's what it looks like. This is the pistol. We call this the Bahamian Viagra baby maker. Oh, okay. So I think I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those do you eat every day? Well, if we clean 50 counts, I'll eat 50 of them. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. So it kind of has elements of ceviche, right? Like very fresh. Yes. It's more on the ceviche side. Yeah. But Dude, I can do that for you. Thank you. Me too. I just... <laughs> Yes. Thank you. There you go. Look what I just got you. I just got you sky <laughs> juice right here. Thank you. No problem. Wow. Teamwork Excellent. makes the dream work. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm gonna start to learn how to cook. I'm gonna be a full grown adult. So just squeeze it. Uh, yes, sir. You got it. You got it. Like, like you're shaking those cowbells. Yeah. And there's your Junkanoo Kong salad. The perfect bite, right there, and. Wow. A few days into my trip, I realized that I was seeing Junkanoo everywhere, and it was clearly something special to Bahamians. So I paid a visit to Arlene at the Educulture Junkanoo Museum to find out more. Junkanoo started as resistance to slavery. When we were a British colony, and the colony, by law, celebrated three days holiday at Christmas time, and the Africans in the Bahamas decided to use the three days to recreate their festivals from the mother country. Now today, it is a parade and it is a competition. We have two major parades. It's Christmas night into Boxing Day. We are dancing from 10 o'clock in the night well into the morning of Boxing Day. And New Year's morning, we start at two o'clock. Then we are dancing straight through until we're tired. But our costumes are all paper in Junkanoo. Are they, are they very delicate? Don't let a cloud form in the sky. Oh no. <laughs> What, what happens Please. if it's starts raining? Please, let me calm down. We don't want to hear the word R-A-I-N. We don't want to hear it. This is one of my costumes. Is that heavy? That looks... They weigh right around 70 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when the drums start, the drums will take off about 30 pounds. Okay, just, but only 30. <laughs> not... The rest is prayer. <laughs> Your worst nightmare is to what we in the Bahamas call to get leave. You didn't finish your costume in time to be on the parade. And if you get leave, they will call you Steve. <laughs> if you get left, they'll call you Jeff. <laughs> so... oh. 
You're very proud to share it with the world. Very much so. It's a uniquely Bahamian phenomenon because I think it is so flashy and so colorful. I mean, the drums just go right through your heart. so many options that you really should not consider any other place other than the Bahamas. So even though you may have come to Nassau, you're just touching the tip of the iceberg and really there are a plethora of other options for you to enjoy. Even though there were more islands to see and adventures to be had, I needed some serious R&R. So I checked in at the iconic Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island where I was ready to sip, slide and stay in luxury. Take a walk through the ancient tunnels of Atlantis and experience The Dig, an immersive aquarium that features a wide variety of marine life. Feeling brave? You can ride and slide at Aquaventure, a 141-acre water park filled with pools, a lazy river, and even a 60-foot high water slide called the Leap of Faith. If water isn't your thing, drop by the Ocean Club Golf Course for a full 18-hole experience. Atlantis has multiple accommodations, including the Cove, a luxury tower that will give you a taste of the A-list life. Welcome to the Cove Sapphire Suite. The Sapphire Suite is pretty impressive. It's 1,700 square feet of absolute luxury. You got 24-hour butler service, a double vanity bathroom, and that view, my gosh, that view is absolutely beautiful. Welcome to the Cove Pool at Atlantis. Now this 9,000 square foot pool is unbelievable. All around here are beachfront cabanas, 20 of them with little design touches from Lulu DK. Our final stop was Fish by Jose Andres, a restaurant that features an unexpected entree. Lionfish, it's not just new to me, it's relatively new to Bahamian cuisine. It's sort of migrated here in the last five years. It's invasive to the reef, eats up all the small fish. So what we're doing here is we're trying to sell as much lionfish as possible. What we do is we break down the fish, we remove the flesh, and then we make a batter. So the batter is a vodka wheat batter with cornmeal. We fry it in that three to five minutes. This is absolutely beautiful. How do you complete this? Well, first, when we fry it, we separate the two fins so that we can plate it like this. You add the flesh of the fish oh, wow. to both sides. A little bit of salt. And then we even add a little bit of seaweed. All just right. to let people know this is from the ocean. Just like that. <laughs> and not from space. Exactly. <laughs> it, it looks, looks like it could be like it's it, from space. It was brought here by aliens, <laughs> for sure. This is the extent of my cooking. Shaking those cowbells. Yeah. I'm good at squeezing citrus. That is my strength. I'm going to give this a try right now. Oh my God. It's like butter, it just like melts in your mouth. It's unbelievable. The meat is just so tender and so soft. We have local fishermen that catch this for us. So yeah. this was caught today. With my stay coming to an end, I realized I was missing an essential part of Bahamian life. I can't leave without experiencing what a Junkanoo is like. Now, I'm not gonna be here for the official thing, but Lance's hosts one every single Saturday. So of course, we're gonna take part in this. Junkanoo is very much an integral part of our culture and our history. It resonates with every Bahamian. Every Bahamian loves Junkanoo. It's something that we all, at some stage in our life, participate in. It's very much the soul and the spirit of every Bahamian. As I took in the parade, I realized this was more than just a trip to paradise. It was a journey into the heart and history of the Bahamian people. When you come into the Bahamas and you meet a Bahamian, you're gonna, you're gonna leave feeling like a bohemian because the people are so warm, just like our island is so beautiful, so warm, it's so friendly, and the people adopt a little bit of that. And you have to learn how to, 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 to move to that music, you oh, know, yeah. you have to get that, that, you, that beat and that motion and that soul. You gotta get that hip, that gyration. And then it happened. <laughs> Thank you.
It started as resistance to slavery here. It's such a celebration. That's right. right. It's a celebration of life, of energy, of the spirit of the people of the Bahamas. It's now a parade with a competition, and it just engages thousands of Bahamians who exhibit their pride in their culture every year.